Good afternoon and a good and Arab Shabbos to everybody. We're uh, continuing with the laws of Lashon Hara. We are on 10.14 in Hilchus Lashon Hara, chapter 10, uh, number Yudalad, number 14. So we just discussed the, in the last halacha, the last, uh, the last law here, that if someone uh, does something to somebody else, like uh, he steals something from him, and there is a... Um, purpose to speak Lashon Har so that he'll get his object back, then one is allowed to do that. And even under certain scenarios, if it's going to cause the person to repent, or if it'll warn people to stay away from him, that's allowed. Now, if the person did something to you personally, then you're not allowed to, uh, because uh, we question your motivation. Like, very likely, you're really just trying to get revenge. However, if there's a practical, tangible result of speaking Lashon Har about someone who did something bad to you or steal something from you, uh, like by you speaking Lashon Hara, you can you you think you'll be able to get your item back, or he's planning on hurting you in the future, and by you speaking Lashon Hara, that will stop him. Then it's permitted, and with all of these cases, it's permitted only if you have seven conditions. And the Chavetz Chaim in ten two describe those seven conditions, and this chapter has been about describing the conditions that one needs to have present to speak Lashon Hara, and now the Chavetz Chaim is going to reiterate those seven conditions. Uh, because of the importance. And it's very important to have these seven conditions whenever you speak Lashon Hara, because if not, one violates the prohibition of Lashon Hara. It's only when all of these seven conditions are met that it is permitted. So the Chavetz Chaim is going to write that one has to be very careful because the Yetzirah, the evil inclination, could t- try to trick us that we have some of these conditions present when in actuality they are not. So let's begin. Ah, One has to be very careful with this leniency to speak Lashon Hara. That one should not be lacking any of the conditions we mentioned earlier. For if one is not careful, he will be trapped by the Eight Sahara in speaking Lashon Hara, because it's very easy, especially when someone does something bad to you, your first reaction is to go tell people what he did, to, you know, have them look down upon him and get revenge, but that is a very, um, that's a very big sin to do that. So one has to have these seven conditions. Since it's so easy for the Yitzhahara to trick us to speak Lashon Hara when someone does something bad to us, I am going to go and rehash these conditions. These are the um, these are a repetition of these seven conditions in brief. One. You know that the person you're speaking Lashon Hara about has not repented from what he did. So, so I'm sorry, that was before the first prat. He says that in general we're talking about the case where someone did something wrong to you or to somebody else, and he did not repent, and your intent is for toelis. You want to accomplish something positive. For example, you want to have him return an item which he stole. So when you have seven conditions, you can do it. Prat echa, the first condition. Shiyir said over you have to have seen what happened yourself. You didn't hear a rumor, you didn't hear from somebody else. Shagam shabemes hayalo, hezek be'enyanov, miyodeim hu amaziko. Right, let's say uh, someone stole a package from you. You don't know who it was, but someone told you it was uh, it was Steve. So you're not allowed to speak Lashon Hara because you know you got a package stolen, but you can't be certain it was Steve. Now, if you saw Steve do it, that's okay. So you have to actually have seen Steve uh, take the package or seemingly see it on video. I would assume it's the same thing. Okay, that's condition number one. Prat Habe is condition number two. Lizar ma'osh lo lahachle tekev shetavar zehu b'chlal gezel v'hazik v'onas dvarim. You can't assume right away, even you saw Steve take the package, you saw Steve do something wrong, you can't assume what he did was thievery, or he was damaging you, or he was hurting you with words, or embarrassing you. You have to contemplate if the action which you saw, did this person actually violate a Torah prohibition? Now, the case I gave was pretty obvious, where the uh, you know the guy came to your front door and stole a package, unless maybe he was taking it, he thought it was going to get damaged, so he was taking it to you so he'd give it back to you. But in a case, it could be these cases that are not so ambiguous, right? It's very uh, very obvious if someone takes something from you 
that's uh, Geneva or Gazela, that's thievery. But if you have to contemplate and make sure that the action that you witnessed was actually against the Torah, because sometimes what you might think is a Torah prohibition is, uh, is not a Torah prohibition. Uh, and this is almost the hardest condition to fulfill. Uh, says this prat, this detail is very hard to fulfill, because we're talking about someone. Let's say you had a, a dispute with somebody, and you're assuming that he did everything wrong, and uh, and therefore he violated the uh, what the Torah has to say. But the Chavetz Chaim says that it's very hard for a person to realize what he did wrong and to see his own faults. So if you're wrong in this scenario, meaning maybe you had a dispute with the person and you were the one who did something wrong, and now you're going to go speak Lashon Har about how so-and-so violates the Torah. So now you're saying Motzi Shemra about this person, which means you're speaking evil about him, something which is false, which is a much worse sin, a Lashon Har. A Lashon Har is even if you say something bad about someone and the information is true. Motzi Shemra is if you say something and it's false. So you, it's, he says it's very difficult, this detail, uh, to ensure that the person did something that was against the Torah because you're involved in the situation and people very often do not see themselves as doing anything wrong so they will blame somebody else. Okay, Prat HaGemo, the third detail. If you believe that there's a chance that if you speak to him personally, before you publicize his sin, let's say we have all the conditions. I saw Steve steal a package from my front door, and he uh, had one of those burglar masks, and uh, I know who it was, and it was very clear what his intent was. Now, I'm still not allowed to go speak Lashon Har about him, because if, if there's a possibility that I can go to Steve and he'll admit that he did something wrong, he said, I'm really sorry, I, uh, I know I shouldn't have done that, uh, whatever, and he gives you, and there's a possibility that, that will happen and you'll get your stuff back, then you're not allowed to publicize what he did. Prat HaDalit B'yosu Yuzar al-Kapanim she'yakol ha-stipur emes b'li tarov v'shakir v'shalol l'gazim ha-enyin yosu b'rimah shehu t'ayinu shalol l'chasar b'hasipur shum prat katan shehu mevin sh'davar zeh hu t'sad z'chus shal chavero av sh'b'emes in t'davar zeh mal l'hatzdeg es chavero he says that the, when you tell over the story what this person did, you have to say everything uh, accurately. You can't exaggerate and you can't leave out any details because there could be a detail in the story that will make him not look so bad. So you have to say every detail and you can't exaggerate. Right, it could be that there's a detail that in your mind it's like irrelevant, but if somebody who's listening to the story hears the detail, they will think in their heads that it's not so bad what he did, so you can't leave out any details. Klal Hadavar, the general principle, you cannot exaggerate the sin that this person did. It is, uh, if one exaggerates when he says the story, he violates many prohibitions and speaks Lashon Hara. Prada Hamishi, the fifth fifth condition, Sheikhavin Litoelis, your intent has to be for a constructive purpose. That's the main point that this whole leniency um, relies on. Uh we wrote it about in Sif Yud Gimel. Meaning your intent has to be Litoelis. The goal of you speaking Lashon Hara is not to get revenge on Steve for stealing your stuff. Your goal is purely to get your stuff back. And it's very difficult, right? Because very often people want to get revenge when someone does something bad to them. But your intent has to be for a constructive purpose, that uh, you're trying to get your stuff back from the one who stole it or whatever person did uh, something to you. Very interesting here, the Chavetz Chaim writes that it's possible that even if your intent in speaking Lashon Hara is to get something off your chest and you want to speak to somebody about it, he writes that it's possible it's also permitted in that case. That's in uh, in the note over here. Okay, Prat Hashishi, the sixth condition. Im hu yachol l'savei v'satowel ha'sazu be'etza acheres, shelo yitztarach l'sapar alav 
אז היה בכל גבנה עשו לספר, ואפילו אם הוא מוכרח לספר את המייסה, אך הוא יכול להקטן את האב לו שלא יסגן לכל כך בפני השמים, והטואלס הזו אשר הוא מקווה שיוצא ידי סיפורו, לא יבצר מחמזה, מצווה היא שיאקטן ולא יגלה כל כלונו לפני השמים, כיוון שבלאו הכי גם כן יוצא לו הטואלס. So if there's another way for you to accomplish your goal without speaking the lashon hara, then you have to do it. Not only that, if there's a way to minimize uh, the bad thing which Steve did to make it sound, or this, whatever this person did, to make it sound not as bad, and not to tell every negative detail, or whatever it is, then you have to do that. Meaning if there's a way that you, you'll, if you speak Lashon Har about Steve, you know, you tell whoever it is that he stole something from you, if you can tell it in a way that will still get your item back, but it will minimize the damage caused, uh, minimize the negative information that is spoken about Steve, then um, you have to do that. Okay, Prat Hashvi, the second condition. Shalei Yisoyvev, lo hezek al yidei sipuro, yosem mikfi adin, she yotze ilo heidu alav ba'ofen zeba bezdin. The damage, the seventh condition is that when you go ahead and tell people this Lashon Hara, the damage which will befall the person you're speaking about cannot be worse than the damage that will be inflicted on him in a rabbinical court. So, if he stole something from you, and the rabbinical court would make him pay, uh, pay back what he did, but if by speaking Lush and Hara that Steve, you know, stole this package from you and all these things are going to befall him, he'll get thrown in jail for three years and he will lose his job and his wife will divorce him and it will ruin his life and a million other bad things will happen, then even if you have all the other six conditions, one is not allowed to speak Lush and Hara because he is uh, getting more punishment than the Torah would inflict in a rabbinical court. So again, these are the seven conditions, but the Chafetz Chaim warns us that one, whenever speaking Lashon Hara for a constructive purpose, right, one is allowed to speak Lashon Hara for a constructive purpose if he has these seven conditions. Um, okay, and actually it's very exciting, we're, we're almost done with the first half, a little over half of the Sefer, which is Hilchas Lashon Hara, and then we'll go on to Hilchas Rechilas Belineder, which is the laws of... Um, gossiping, telling somebody that someone else was speaking about him. A lot of the laws are, are very, uh, obviously very relevant and very tied into what we're doing now. Just as a side note, if anyone's interesting, anyone is interested in Manalapin, we're joining with the Chafetz Chaim Heritage Foundation, starting on July 6th for 40 days to accept upon oneself to not speak Lashon Hara, especially between the hours of 7 and 8 p.m., and to every day accept upon yourself to say four positive things uh, to somebody. And, uh, the Chavetz Chaim Heritage Foundation every day will also send out an email of inspiration. So if anyone is interested in joining this program and it's to merit that those who are sick stay healthy and it should be a merit to protect the Manalapin community, if anyone wants to join, please uh, reach out either by email, shaulrosenthal at gmail.com, S-H-A-U-L, Rosenthal at gmail, or if you want to message me on Facebook, more than happy to uh, get you that information how to join and hope everyone has a beautiful Shabbos.